Hello humans, Batsy here with another create video. Today we going to take a look at an EXP farm. In particular a silverfish farm. Which is, in my opinion, the best EXP farm you can make with create. At least for the little effort it takes to build. You can see that I have over a hundred levels, and you might be wondering how long it took me to get them all. Not even five minutes, that's how little it took me to make that many levels. It barely takes a couple of hits with the sword to get you to 30 levels, it's really amazing. So let me show you around a little bit. The farm does require a power supply. It takes around 24,000 stress units if I remember correctly. But as you can see, it does generate its own materials to work. There is a cobble generator, with a couple of encased fans to convert it all to infested stone. With some redstone to time it out. It's a fairly simple design. Let's take a look at how to operate it before getting into all the details. I just removed all my levels of experience to see it more clearly. It is important that the sword has sharpness and sweeping edge. It requires sharpness to kill them in one hit and sweeping edge to be able to hit them through the glass. The idea is to get close to the armor stand. So if we flick the lever now and we move close to the armor stand. We can aim downwards, and simply hit the armor stand with our sword. Just three swings of the sword already gave us 30 levels of experience. It's quite satisfying to do, and you can see how much EXP we are getting. I could spend here all day. All right, that's enough demonstration. Let's put back the sword too. You can see how many levels that were, and it took us no time. This is so much better compared to really good ender farms. This farm can also be placed anywhere you want, although it's recommended to be in the overworld because it requires water to run. Now let's take a look at how it actually works. The first step of the farm is a cobble generator, a design made by Triobian. For small-scale cobble generation, this is the best way to go about it. I recommend checking their videos to see how it works. Next it's going to throw all the cobblestone, and firstly get converted into stone. After that, it will move through the vault to the other side, and get haunted into infested stone. It's very simple, if you don't want to use the schematic, it shouldn't be hard to copy what you see on the screen. After that, it gets moved upwards where it will be stored in the big vault. This big vault has two purposes. First, it ensures there is a good stock of materials. While the farm is running it will consume more than it generates, just remember to fill it up a bit before you run the farm. Secondly, it's the simplest way to evenly distribute materials along all the deployers underneath. You can see how we covered the bottom of the vault with all those shoots. That will make sure the deployers underneath always have the stone to place down. And speaking of placing down, let's see where it does place down the stone. Here you can see a chassis on the other side of the glass. That chassis is connected to a minecart, and it's also the spot where all the stone will go. Looks like a couple of blocks fell off the cobble generator. Anyway, here we have the redstone that will control the minecart. While the link is receiving the signal from the lever, it will constantly power up the latch, which will send a signal to the first pulse extender. That will make the cart become an entity for 4 ticks exactly. Then the signal will bounce back into the latch, and keep the latch turned off for another 4 ticks. That will make the cart become blocks again, thus breaking all the infested stone in its place, and with that, releasing all the silverfish underneath it. You can see how it does a quick cycle every time, it's a fairly simple setup. A bit slower than a gantry setup, but a very good one to work with deployers. If I turn it on with the lever, you can see how quickly it's spamming the silverfish. It's really cool to see them all spawning constantly. I better turn this off before things get laggy. Quick note, you can notice I placed vines where the silverfish ends up. That's a vanilla mechanic to prevent entity cramming, otherwise, the silverfish would instantly die when they go over the limit. It's a very simple and clean setup, I really like this farm. It's also important that the cart is set to lock rotation. It shouldn't do anything if it doesn't move, but just in case. 
The redstone cycle is fairly simple, it should never break on its own. Up here, I have also added this clutch in case we have enough stone, we can simply turn it off. The vault should be able to store a bit over a hundred thousand blocks. So there is quite a margin to operate the farm. I have also added a few decorations here and there, nothing too flashy, but makes the farm look a bit better. As well as the enchanting setup which is not required, but it's good to have nearby. The schematic for this design will be in the description below. It will include all its decorations and the extra blocks I used. You can choose to not feed the cannon with any of the blocks you don't want to use, and simply build whatever you prefer afterwards. Alternatively, I will also add this naked design. With nothing but the main structure, where you can also decide not to use casings and glass, and build the wall with something else. The stone underneath is a placeholder, this is here so the cannon won't remove the floor of your base and leave this section empty. Simply do not place any stone on the cannon and it should leave your current floor. I might have forgotten to mention this but. Those veins are here to prevent entity cramming for the silverfish, and the trapdoor will prevent the vines from extending. The cannon should place it down, but, remember it needs to be there just in case it doesn't. I hope the humans enjoy this little schematic, it's one of my favorite farms from the create mod, and it's incredibly powerful. I have also been working on a variant of this farm that works in the nether. We were lacking an EXP farm on the SMP, so I thought it would be a good idea to place this in the shopping district, instead of having an ender farm that takes ages to fly to and from it. That way not only do we have a powerful enchanting setup, but also one very accessible, inside the shopping district itself. And because I wanted to make it fit with the nether theme, I went a bit above and beyond with the design. Check this out humans, this looks so epic. Oh my gods, I love this design. I mean sure it's nothing big, but it looks so menacing, so silly, and hilarious in all the right ways. I thought if we are making pretty much a meat grinder for silverfish. Why not go all the way and build a big silverfish pouring lava into some bones from an older creature? I'm really happy with the design, it fits so well in this corner. The bones imitating some ribs fit really nicely too, and I like the use of the chains between the bones, I think that was a nice detail. I'm not entirely sure what I was doing, not gonna lie, I guess it's like the remains of an older creature, and then there is this huge silverfish spitting lava into it or something. I don't know, I just think it looks hilarious. <laughs> the silverfish itself is pretty nice though, I really like this block. Eroded basalt it's called. I think that combines really well with the shafts and the rest of the stony things. I'm so happy with how it looks. And these fences too, bar panels from the decorative mod. 
These panels look amazing as fences. Back here I placed a deployer with a bunch of anvils. It's just in case someone breaks one anvil, so they don't need to walk back home to craft a new one. It's very handy. I love the use of horizontal chains between the bones, I think that detail is really cool. The rest is pretty much like a normal enchanting setup. Barrels, anvils, crafting table, the grinder over there. I mean what else do you need in here, this is pretty much all. The floor is pretty cool too. I like the use of amethyst with glass. Here is where the anvils get deployed, you can see the little hand behind it. I also added a sword in here, to make sure everyone is using the right enchants. And a few signs to make sure the rest know how to use this thing. Especially in case a new player joins the SMP. Speaking of SMP, did you know you can also join the server? Yes, I'm talking about you. All tier 2 members and Patreon supporters get access to the server, so what are you waiting for? Become a tier 2 Fong and get access to exclusive perks. Now shameless plug aside, what was I saying? Signs, yes, signs. I have added two different modes for the farm. This right side is the version I showed you humans before. It's set up at 4 ticks, and as you can see, it does spam quite a lot. We better turn it off and deal with those silverfish. This mode is in case someone wants to repair their entire gear and wants to be quick about it. Okay, that seems to be all. While this left lever, this is the more tame mode. It's set to 10 ticks, so it spawns silverfish once per second. It does still give a lot of experience, but in case the server is busy, it will generate less lag, and it's plenty of EXP for normal enchanting. Still, some left? Alright, now yes. I'm happy, I'm really happy with how this turned out, it's a pretty nice design. But more interesting stuff, let's check out the back of it. This is the belt that moves all the silverfish to the corner. Underneath you can see the mess of sails I caused to get enough power to run it at max speed. It's not pretty but I still had a lot of wool left. Don't mind this mess, this is the back side of my shop. Over here though, you can see the main tank that stores the cobblestone. We are on the nether so, I couldn't generate the cobble as easily as in the overgrown. My solution is pretty much a portable vault. If this runs low, I just pick this thing up and bring it back to the factory to fill it back up. In total I can have 200,000 stones combined, so, I don't really need to fill it up that often. Right now we still have plenty left to be honest. I think this should last a week unless someone needs a whole lot of enchanting. Over here is the same setup. The lava converts it to stone. The soul campfire haunts it to infested stone. Then it moves up to the deployers. It's pretty much the same minus the portable vault. I also made it unnecessarily tight, I'm not sure why, I wasn't trying to but this space is pretty cramped. Now if we go down here. You can see I added a few more redstone than before. This little box is to hold the lava, in case I lift the vault, this will prevent the lava from spilling everywhere. As for the redstone, every section is the same, but it has two different timings for it. This one is for 4 ticks, so it's the quicker setup. Which powers this stone, the minecart is on the other side of it. And the left section is set to 10 ticks, so it's a slower timing. I really like this design. I think having the option for a faster or slower experience is pretty nice. I was about to say, goodbye, when one of the tier 2 fangs told me that should be good to have a lock, in case someone walks away with the farm still running. So I ended up adding the pressure plate over here. I still need to polish the redstone slightly, but let me show you what I did. It still works the same way with the levers and the armor stand additionally, now you have to hold the pressure plate down. If the farm is online, then it will bring the silverfish as long as the player is on the pressure plate. This is the new section of redstone that I added. Using the stone I already had here, I'm splitting the signal from the pressure plate to unlock the latches. I think it's a fairly simple and elegant solution, but I'm pretty sure I will eventually get rid of the levers, at least one of them anyway, we will see. But now yes, this is going to be it for this episode, I hope the humans enjoyed it. 
As I said before, the schematics for the basic models will be in the description below. Feel free to use those for your bases. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, thank you so much for watching, and I will see the humans next time.